Hello and welcome to Terrier News. I'm Katherine Barron. And I'm Samantha Gambino. A lot has been going on around the world, but let's start with the presidential race. Bernie Sanders won big this past week, beating Hillary Clinton in three states, Washington, Alaska, and Hawaii. He's still trailing Clinton in the delegate count, but he's closing the gap. The race between the two is heating up in Wisconsin, and next Tuesday will be huge for the winner. Sanders is urging Clinton and her campaign to have another debate before the primary on the 5th. However, it seems as though Clinton has turned her sights on Donald Trump and her new campaign ads. On the Republican side, Ted Cruz beat out Trump in Idaho and Utah, but Trump won Arizona. The focus, again, is on Wisconsin. Cruz is firing shots at Trump and Governor Kasich, hoping that this will be the state that will make him the frontrunner. In other big news, Trump's campaign manager, Corey Landowski, was charged with battery for grabbing a reporter. But Trump has defended Landowski and is sticking by his side. Last week, another terrorist attack occurred in Brussels, Belgium, killing 34 and injuring many more. Four Americans were killed as well. Three men have been captured and charged in Belgium for their participation in the attack. A fourth member in the airport attacks is still on the run, but officials are searching feverishly. Throughout all of Europe, nations are on high alert for more of these attacks. In northern Paris, there were two more men caught and arrested for planning the attacks. There are other suspected terrorists that have also been arrested and in Holland and Italy. Then on Easter Sunday, ISIS also took responsibility for another suicide bombing in Pakistan. In a park full of mainly women and children, 73 were killed and at least another 100 were injured. However, in Iraq and Syria, ISIS is being pushed back. Here in the U.S., more security routines are being run and major cities are taking the proper precautions. But ISIS is not backing down. They are promising, especially in Europe, that there are more of these horrific attacks to come. So you were in Poland over spring break. What was the difference between security here and there? I have to say, you can see the difference with all of the military personnel yeah. that were around the security areas and even just walking from one connection to another connecting flight to where you had to go. Yeah. Um, it was there was definitely a higher security presence, yeah. so which is sad but necessary yeah, for sure. For sure. Now in Georgia, the controversy surrounding a religious exemption bill did not stop even after Governor Nathan Deal said that he would veto the bill. The bill would allow any businesses rooted in religion to deny service to anyone in the LGBT community. This also included clergy members to refuse marry, to marry gay couples. Bigger businesses like Disney, Coca-Cola, the NFL, and more threatened to pull all of their businesses out of the state if the bill was passed. The conservative people of Georgia say that they will not stop pushing the bill, no matter how long it takes. This comes after North Carolina is facing issues after the recently passed anti-LGBT law there. On Monday, a man was about to walk past security at the Capitol building when he pulled out a gun. But before he could shoot anyone, the guards quickly reacted and shot him first. There was one innocent bystander that was harmed and taken to the hospital with minor injuries. The gunman, Larry Dawson, was known to police and has a track record with these disturbances. Last October, he was arrested after disturbing the House of Representatives session. Capitol Police say it was an isolated incident, but most of Washington, D.C. was on lockdown for the better part of the afternoon. Blue Ivy and Beyonce and Jay-Z were there, did you know? Yeah, didn't they keep the Easter egg hunt going? They did, Elvis? actually. They so did. now let's get more entertainment news with Alexa Castelluccio and Corey Adams. Thank you, Catherine. Okay, guys, so this week's latest buzz has been all about social media giving us unwanted changes. On Monday, Instagram disturbed people's feeds with way too many posts, asking followers to turn on notifications for their individual accounts. By doing this, you would allow Instagram to send you notifications every time a certain account has a new post. This may be okay for your favorite accounts, but it is likely to become annoying if used too often, which already it has. Many people on the gram have voiced their opinion, and the majority has protested against this unwanted update. But don't worry, the change is not set in stone. According to the New York Times, an Instagram spokesman stated on Wednesday that despite the rumors, no fee changes are being implemented right now. We still have weeks or even months of testing to go. So it looks like until then, everyone's just got to try to adjust to it and be patient as the people of Instagram are experimenting. So, Corey, mm. I have an opinion about this. Okay. I follow Gigi and all the celebrities, right? Mm. And as soon as I got a notification, I literally thought she liked my photo. I went crazy. I was like, oh my God, Gigi. And it's right. like, oh no, she just posted a photo. the photo. It misled me. I was so upset. Mm hmm. I. If it's going to be like how it is with Facebook, it's like every status. Yeah. Like, I, I don't need to know it every status. It gets annoying. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> also, with more unwanted drama, on Tuesday, R&B singer Kalani posted a photo of herself in a hospital bed with the caption that suggested she may have attempted to commit suicide. 
The post followed a day of social media storm, much of it directed negatively at her expense. After rapper Party Next Door posted a photo of his hand and her hands implying that the two had rekindled their romantic relationship, and thus that Kalani with NBA player Kyrie Irving had ended. Singer-songwriter Chris Brown, who is friends with Kalani's ex, wasn't buying it. Instead, he went off on Kalani in several tweets in the middle of the night, essentially saying Kalani's suicidal attempt was a PR stunt done for sympathy. The internet went insane over Brown's comments with people blasting the singer left and right for being insensitive. And as for Kalani, it's unclear if she's in the hospital, but according to TMZ, sources close to the singer tell us she's doing much better. So Alexa, how do you feel about this situation? I mean, I kind of agree with Chris. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, if you're going to do something like that, I don't know why you would want to share it with everyone else. Like, usually people do it in silence. But mm -hmm. then again, you know, if you have nothing nice to say, don't say it. Right. So exactly. it can go either way. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. All right, guys. Well, that's all the scoop for this week. Back to you, ladies. Thank you both. Now let's hear from Matt Conklin with sports. Hey, guys. Women's water polo split a pair of games in their conference opener on March 27th. The Terriers fell to Iona College in the first match 14-5, but they responded with an 11-8 victory over Siena. And former SFC soccer star and France native Vincent Bezicourt has signed a pro contract with the New York Red Bulls reserve team. Coaches and teammates are very happy for the former midfielder, who in 2014 carried the Terriers to a conference title and last year led the team with seven goals. And uh, Met fans are feeling very relieved today. A bit of a scare as Matt Harvey was diagnosed with a blood clot in his bladder on Tuesday night. The possibility of Harvey starting the Mets 2016 opener next week was certainly in question. But he has since passed the clot and he's all good. The Mets start their season on April 3rd against the Royals. The Yankees, who have yet to name an opening day starter, will open up on the 4th against the Houston Astros. All right, that's it for sports. Back to you guys. Thanks, Matt. That's all for Terrier News this week. Check us out on our YouTube page, Facebook page, and Twitter page, SFC Terrier TV. I'm Katherine Barron. And I'm Samantha Gambino. Thanks for watching, and see you next week. <laughs>